Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. Hey guys, Chef Bart here again and I am the dude with the food. What we're going to do today is, it's the holidays again, so here we go. This is quite an involved process, but if you do it the way I tell you, it'll come out and it'll be the best you'll ever taste. The main thing is you got to get rid of all the water and the potatoes, and I'll show you how to do that. But what we got here, and you can have this recipe, I usually make probably 20 or 30 pounds of this stuff because we got a lot of friends and we like to uh, bring them over and stuff. And uh, I really don't need to be a certain religion to cook food. I just love to cook everything. So what we got here is 10 pounds of russet potatoes. We got six large onions. We got a dozen eggs. And then we got, now this is matzo meal. And uh, if you can find it in the ethnic part of some of the uh, supermarkets. I happen to got, get this at the Fred Meyer. But it's like breadcrumbs, but it's actually matzo that's been crushed up. So matzo meal, and this is really important if you want it to taste really traditional. We got, uh, don't ask me why, but a tablespoon of baking powder. And that's just the way I always made it. That's the way my mother-in-law made it. So we're going to add that in. And I got a quarter of a cup of kosher salt. Okay, and then you're going to need... It's preferable to have a food processor. I've equipped mine with the shredding blade, but you can do it with a box grater, but it's really hard, and what I find is if you do it with this, the potatoes brown by the time you get them into the water with the lemon in it, so it's really nice to have one of these. And nowadays, there are, this one was 65 bucks, and it's even got a smaller bowl that has a little attachment so you can do little stuff in it. It's really nice. And then I prefer to use an electric skillet because when you're cooking with oil, you really need to know what temperature it is because if you make it too hot, obviously you can have a fire and stuff and it's not too safe. So I have an electric grill and if I put this on medium high, I know that the oil is going to be 350 and it's going to be perfect. It's going to hover between 350 and 340 as this goes on and off with the thermostat. And then the final thing is I like to do mine in peanut oil. Now you really don't need peanut oil because it's not that high of a temperature. 350 is at the upper limit of most oils. But the peanut oil, uh, it doesn't impart a flavor to it. It just kind of makes it neutral so that you can really taste the potato lockers themselves. So uh, I'm going to get set up. Okay, so what I did was I got all my potatoes. I rinsed them in the sink and I took one of those sponges that have the you know, the green part on the back, the coarse part, to, and I ran it over here just to get, or over the potatoes just to get the dirt off. So those are ready to go, and I don't peel my potatoes. I really don't peel them for really any recipe that I do. I just think it's not necessary, and the skin has extra, they say the skin has extra stuff in it that's good for you, so, but I like the way it tastes, and uh, you won't even notice it in the finished product. I just think it adds that much more flavor. So what I did was I halved all the onions, and somehow I ended up with a red onion in here. I must have picked out of the wrong thing in my pantry, but I'm going to do that anyway. So now, we're going to shred all these in the processor, get it done as quick as possible, throw it in the bowl, and put it aside so my eyes don't go nuts. There may be some big pieces in here. If there are, I'll just take them out. So now we're going to set this aside. I think I'm going to put a cover on it because my eyes are going nuts. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the onions in there because once they come out of the machine, they're going to need 
a place to go into that has some lemon in them so that they don't brown. So now I'm ready to put all the onions in and this has got a bit of a juice in it too. pieces. There's only a couple of them. Okay, and to this I'm going to add a teaspoon of lemon juice. And I'm going to make sure it's mixed in. This next step is critical. What we're going to need is a dish towel, a clean dish towel, and I'll show you why in a minute. So now we'll start shredding all this, and we're going to do it in batches. dish towel and you're not going to believe how much water comes out of these. It's, you have to be pretty strong to do this but all this water take all the eggs and I'm going to take everything else and I'm going to put it in this, this mixture so that I can just then add the potatoes. may look dry, but as you add the potatoes, the water is going to settle out of what's left in the shreddings because of the salt, and it's going to create some liquid in here. But you just need to keep mixing this as you cook them. Okay, this is going to get mixed a lot more, so now we'll continue <coughs> with our potato. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour off all of this potato liquid and if you notice in the bottom there's potato starch and I like to add that to the pancakes also it's kind of hard 
work, but there it goes. So, you know, add all this potato starch. <coughs> That'll help to bring them together when they cook. Okay, so you're going to need a roll of uh, paper towel that doesn't have any writing on it, and I'm just going to line the pan with it that we're going to, that's going to receive them afterwards. Okay, so what we got here is, now the oil's been sitting, I had to clean up the kitchen, so this has been sitting for probably a half hour, and it's still okay, the potatoes are still, as, they're as brown as they're going to get due to the uh, lemon juice. But one of the ways you can check to see how hot the oil is, is just take an instant read thermometer and put it in here. And I already did this, and this is running about 350. Okay? So, we're gonna take this mixture and mix it up again because as it sits, it gets, the water comes out of everything. So we want to make sure that it's well combined every time before we do the actual cooking. Now what I do is I'm going to take a batch, and this is just by feel, I'm going to put it in here, I'm probably going to do about six of them at once, and then I'm going to let them cook for three minutes a side, I'm going to get my timer going. So I'm going to do this and I'll fast forward it, so uh, here we go.
Finally, the last one. This is taking a long time, about, I don't know, an hour and a half. I decided to make one big one because I'm done. Okay, guys, that was a heck of a process. Hope you weren't bored by all the fast forwarding. So I'm going to take some sour cream, get it all over myself. And some people like, hmm, some people like applesauce. I'm not being fallen at all here because I'm done. No, it's okay. Okay, so let's taste these. Oh, man. There's the crispiness of the uh, potato there, and then the taste of the onion along with the Matzo meal, it's unparalleled to anything you've ever tried. So, I personally like them with the sour cream. You hear that crunch? Oh man. I know I made that big one, you probably want me to cut into it, but I'm just going to eat these right now. And by the way, this dish would have been a lot fuller, but everybody ate it for dinner, so probably would have been like another two inches. Yeah, I ended up eating that one and it was good also. Oh yeah. What I like about the lockers is this recipe is not just like a potato chip. It's got some texture to it. That's my potato lockers, and uh, remember, it'll be the best you'll ever taste. Happy Hanukkah, and see you next time.